Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about generalized F2L terminology. This is useful for 3D cubing to really understand what you're doing in F2L, um, but it's absolutely essential in 4D F2L in order to talk about the things we're doing there and how they relate to 3D. Um, so the first thing we'll talk about is that when you're building an F2L pair, um, there's two pieces. In 3D we call them the corner and the edge, um, but in general they might not be corners and edges, you might be pairing, say, edges and ridges in 4D. So we use the term head to refer to the piece that is kind of acting like the corner, and body for the piece that's acting like the edge. So if I build an F2L pair here, we have a pair consisting of a head and a body. Now let's talk about axes. This puzzle has six axes. An axis is a thing you can turn around. So uh, this is the same as a face in a face turning puzzle like this, but not all puzzles turn on their faces. For example, a cube has either four or eight axes that you can turn around depending on how you count it. Um, this puzzle has six, the six faces. There's a few kinds of axis. So there's the base axis, which is where you'll be putting the heads of your F2L pairs. So here that's white. You see it has the corners. Um, there's side axes, which are ones that you can turn um, as part of F2L that are not completely solved. You're, they're partly solved initially, and your goal is to make them more solved. There's free axes, which are um, axes where you don't care about any of the pieces on it, right? Like, I don't care about any of the yellow pieces as I'm doing F2L. So it is completely free. I can mess it up. There's the top axis, which is the free axis that you're currently working with. So in 3D, there's only one free axis. Um, but in 4D, we'll have two free axes. Um, on some larger puzzles, like a Megaminx, you'll have many free axes. But only one of those is a top axis just whatever you happen to be working with in the moment. Now let's talk about actions. So an action is a sequence of moves that you can do as part of a step um, that preserves the invariance of that step. So what do I mean by that? Well, the invariance of F2L are things that you expect to be constant, that if you're in the middle of F2L, probably those pieces should stay the same. So the invariance of F2L is that you should, your cross should be solved, and pairs that you've already inserted should stay solved. Anything else in the puzzle we don't care about. But generally in F2L, if one of those invariants is broken, you'll want to fix it as soon as possible. So in F2L, you might need to break the cross temporarily, but you'll want to fix it again as soon after. Um, so actions in F2L are typically uh, a 90 degree rotation of one of the side faces, either uh, right, front, left, or back, followed by some rotation of the top face, followed by undoing the side rotation. So you, that's three moves, and you'll typically do those three moves all as one unit. So we call it an action. Um, and after doing those three moves, if you've done it correctly, your invariance should stay the same. Now let's talk about push and pull. So uh, when you break the cross, that is a push. And when you reform the cross, that is a pull. So an action is a push, some rotation of top, pull. Um, sometimes you will form on push like this, so that's a push pair. And uh, sometimes you'll form on the pull. So that was a pull pair. Um, there's also in 3D, you'll often see over push and over pull. So if you are, um, if you do a push and then it push again, so that the cross lands on top, that is an over push. And if you do a pull and pull again, so that you're actually pushing the opposite side, that's an over pull. Uh, we don't use those much in 4D, but it is a thing that happens in 3D sometimes, especially with F2L algorithms for specific cases. Another important concept in F2L is hide and reveal. So, for example, if I have this case here, uh, the edge really wants to be over in this spot in order for these to be, um, to be able to be inserted. So I can hide the corner using a push, move the edge over, and then reveal the corner. So hiding is when you push something away from the top face or pull away. You can hide using a push or a pull. Um, and reveal is when you bring it back onto top. So now these look like they're sort of paired. Um, what we, we call this a split pair. Uh, a pair is a split if you can use a single twist to um, a single twist of a side axis to, to pair them. And often you can do that in combination with an insert. So you can make the push that you use to pair them also be the push of an insert. Um, you can also use a pull 
to pair these. Um, for example, if I'm here, I can make that a pull pair. So the general term for this is a split pair. Another useful term is cap. Um, so if we have these two pieces like this, we might want to separate them. You could do that using uh, a push to hide it, hide the, the head, and then reveal. But since they're already right here, the fastest thing to do is push like this, and then uncap the head. So capping is when you use the top axis to match the two pieces. And uncap is when you use the top axis to split them. So here we are uncapping the, this block. Um, and if we do it like this, now they are a split pair. So these can be inserted like that. And if we have, um, if we have a case like this, we can solve it by capping the pieces together. So that is cap and uncap. Another term is reorient or rebase. So if you have a corner like this, let's say we don't want the orange sticker on top. Um, we could put a different sticker on top uh, by rebasing or reorienting the head so that now white is on top. So you'll typically use a push or pull to reorient. This is in contrast with hide or reveal. Generally speaking, if you twist a piece or, or if a piece is involved in a side twist and it is not hidden or revealed, it's probably getting rebased. And that can be very useful in 4D where there's a lot of ways that a corner can be oriented. Then we'll be able to use rebasing to give it the orientation we want. Finally, I'm going to do a solve and try to talk through uh, exactly what terminology I'm using as I go through the solve. So first I'm just um, building the cross, AKA the base. There we go. Um, but the first F2L pair, um, we have it already inserted in the wrong slot. So I'll use a push and pull to get it out and push and pull to put it back in. Um, for the next pair, uh, we have the head is, in, is already on the top cell. Um, the body is in its slot, but misoriented. So I'm going to reveal the edge and put it there and then pull back. Now for this, we're going to hide the corner and slide the edge over to, to match, slide the body over to match up with it. So hide the corner and reveal the corner so that they're paired. And then we can insert that using a push and pull. For the next pair, um, they're already paired, but with the wrong orientation. So I'm going to hide the corner, slide the body over and reveal the corner to form a split pair and going to over pull that. So combining that into a push, pair them up and insert. And for the last pair, um, we're going to hide the corner re while revealing the edge and form a split pair, which we can uh, pair using a push and insert in the same action. So hopefully you see how to use this terminology to describe what you're doing in F2L, and that's going to become especially useful in 4D. So try doing a solve uh, of your own puzzle using F2L in 3D and try to see what actions you're using and how to use this terminology to describe the, the things you're doing to the puzzle.